Blessed Shabbat, brothers and sisters, Hebrews in Jamaica, the Caribbeans, the West, to the four corners of the earth, scattered greetings. This is a Shabbat lesson. I'm going to title it The Meek. Who is the Meek? Right? Who is the Meek, brothers and sisters? Who is the Meek? Right? Who are the meek? Why did Yahusha say blessed are the meek? Who are the meek? Meaning uh, examples of meekness, brothers and sisters. Right? Meekness is a humble attitude that expresses itself in the patient endurance of offenses. Gentleness is a practical synonym. In, it implies mercy and self-restraint. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. Sometimes we confuse the two, but the difference between a meek person and a weak person is this. A weak person cannot do anything. A meek person, on the other hand, can do something but chooses not to. Right, brothers and sisters? So the word meek is synonym or in parallel to the word blessed are the poor right blessed are the meek blessed are the poor right automatically when people hear the word poor right they their mind say go towards that person is has um has no material value no roofing, no, no housing, as we say, no housing, right? No, you know, like mobility, like, you know, material things, you know, I mean, necessity, you know, such as clothes, you know, money, food, a shelter, you know, most people associate poor with those materialistic and tangible things on the other hand yes but when it comes to scriptures and spiritual things the poor means different right so we're going to go to scriptures to show you that look at your screen right now brothers and sisters okay brothers and sisters so you know look at your screen right Isaiah 66 2 so we're going to look at meek but we know meek is to be humble right so let, let's look at blessed are the poor and look what poor means in scriptures right brothers and sisters so turn look at the screen you know Isaiah 62 2 16 11 KJV Isaiah 62 colon 2 16 11 KJV right for all those things had mine hand made, and all those things have been, said Yahuwah. But to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. You see that, brothers and sisters? Let me read over again to you. Isaiah 66, 2, 611 KJV. Right? For all those things had mine hand made. And all those things had been, said Yahuwah, but to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of contrite spirit and tremble at my word. So, if you look at the bottom right here on the, on, on, on the screen, right brothers and sisters, underneath the, the, the scripture of Isaiah 66, colon 2, this is a strong concordant dictionary biblical meaning of the word poor H6041 right and the Hebrew word for poor is Aniyani right Aniyani huh? Aniyani from Concord H6031 first definition depressed in mind or circumstances particularly same as H6035 Subjectively and H60 
for one adjectively afflicted humble afflicted humble afflicted humble just like with meek meaning humble you see the parallel you see the parallel brothers and sisters huh huh Hmm? Lowly, needy, poor. You see, brothers and sisters. Right? Keep looking at my screen, brothers and sisters, right? We're gonna go to Matthew 5, colon 1 dash 5, 6, 11 KJV, right? Yes, brothers and sisters, the the the, the scripture on, on, on the image may be a bit small. Maybe you, maybe many of you have big screen phones, or you know what I mean. You could see it better or zoom better, right? All right, let's keep going. And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain. And when he was sit, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, "Blessed are the poor in spirit." You see that? We just came from Isaiah 66 to where we talk about the poor in spirit, contrite heart. Hmm? And here we see in Matthew 5, colon 1 dash 5, 16 left KJV, he said, that is the Mashiach, right? And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, because this is the Mashiach speaking, Yahusha. Right? He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in what? Spirit. For there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So you see, when the Mosai talk about poor, is a dual. That's why I say you have to study the scripture in context, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how you study scriptures. You know, the scripture, the, 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 this historic um, history, holy book that speak of Yahshua, the son of Hebrew slave and their forefathers, right? It speak about us. You understand, brothers and sisters? So the poor is dual. Sometimes it's referenced in context to materialistic things. But majority of the time, when we talk about poor, it's talking towards a spiritual thing. Yes, brothers and sisters. So you still can be rich materialistically, but poor in spirit, meaning you're humble and you're meek with your, with your riches at the most I bless you with, brothers and sisters. You see same way likewise with, 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 with if you're poor materialistically you're still poor in spirit i mean you 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 you're still poor in spirit brothers and sisters that's 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 you know what i mean again your essence you're humble you understand you're meek with the poorness of lack of materialistic things right and because of that same spiritual meekness and humbleness, you end up being blessed through some type of materialistic support from others, you know what I mean? And the strength of the Mashiach guiding you to those people that will help you to better and to help you overcome your lack of materialistic things that you need and necessities you need in the world. Right, brothers and sisters, so let's go over this again. Matthew 5, calling 1 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Right? Blessed are the humble. Blessed are the poor in spirit. You see the phenomenon? Right? You still can be rich of all this wealth, but you lack humbleness. You lack meekness. 
right? And another, right? Maybe poor in materialistic things, right? But he is humble. That's his meekness, right? He still have faith that things can turn around. Still have hope, right? He shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. A perfect example again with, right, with uh, the poor man Lazarus and the rich man. Perfect example. The poor man, the poor man who have all that sores and the dogs licking his sores according to the scriptures. Right? Lazarus and the rich man, Lazarus, right? He was the proud materialistic. He's poor materially. Right? But look at his demeanor, look at his spirit. He was still humble. He was still meek. Right? So that's the spiritual side of poor in context according to scriptures. Right? But look at the rich man. He was rich materialistic. He was a rich man, got his servants, maids, castle, whatever. Right? He was rich physically. But he was deprived spiritually. He wasn't humble. He was meek. You see, brothers and sisters. So, you, you know the difference, right? Okay. So, meaning of blessed are the meek. Yahusha said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. We just spoke about that in Matthew 5, colon 5. The word meek from the Hebrew language is anva. And it means mildness or pressed. This term only occurs five times in scriptures. It describes the two characteristics gained from affliction, humility, and gentleness. When applied to Elwa Kim, it represents his submission to his own nature. It is the idea a horse being controlled by a bit and bridle. The horse is choosing to submit to authority. That is meekness. It is power under constraint. Meekness is not weakness. 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 It is a power under control. As writer of the Proverbs say, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Hmm. You see that? King Solomon said, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city let me go over this again for your brothers and sisters right that is that that's in proverbs 16 32 16 11 kjv right he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who captures a city <laughs> that is very deep brothers and sisters Right, let that sink in. Right. In contrast, the individual who is not gentle is likened to a city that is broken into without walls. Right. Proverbs 25, 28. Right. Proverbs 25, colon 28, 1611 KJV. Gentleness always uses its resource appropriately, unlike the out of control emotions that so often are destructive. And have no place in your life as a behavior and that is prevalent in our so-called black community especially among our women right lack emotional control and some of you weak effeminate so-called black men you are a disgrace to manhood and masculinity it's time to wake up and you shameless ungodly so-called black women who continually increase inequity amongst men with your with your simp effeminate men right next to you cheering you on right right meekness is not weakness right 
it is a power under control as the writer of Proverbs say, he who is slow to anger is better than the mighty and he who rules his spirit than he who captures the city. Proverbs 16, colon 32. In contrast, the individual who is not gentle is likened to a city that is broken into and without walls. Proverbs 25, colon 28, KJV. Gentleness always uses its resources appropriately. Unlike the out of control emotions that so often are destructive and have no place in your life as a believer. Meekness versus pride. Pride has been redefined in the earth. Systematic culture as a virtue, the strong, the beautiful, the powerful, the intelligent, and the poly and 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 the privileged take every opportunity to put themselves forward. Politicians manifest pride in speeches and debates. Entertainers glamorize pride in their movies and lifestyles. Education teach pride by emphasizing self-esteem and making every child a winner whether they deserve it or not. And sports I can reinforce, reinforce pride as the path to greatness. Hmm? Hence, the, hence the term pride lead, pride, pride lead it before the fall or pride go it before the fall. Huh? Hmm, brothers and sisters? Probably the least admired character, quality in the earth is meekness. And yet the greatest person who ever lived was a meek and humble man like from me. For I am gentle, meek and humble in heart. Matthew 11, colon 29, 16, 11 KJV. Yahusha exemplified meekness during his first advent. Even as he ministered in the power of Elohim, those who follow him will also demonstrate meekness or gentleness as the fruit of a spirit-filled life. In Galatians 5.22, right? Let's look at that, brothers and sisters. Right? Let's look at that, brothers and sisters. Right? Galatians 5, colon 22, 6.11, KJV. Okay, brothers and sisters. You know, we're going we go, we to take it further, right? Galatians, I said Galatians 5.22, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start from verse 19 to 26. So that's of Galatians 5. Instead of 520 or 522, we're gonna take it to we're gonna take it from Galatians 519, right? To 26, 611 KJV. Galatians 5, 19, right? To 26, 611 KJV. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, and they are these adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, and lavishness. You see that? Now the works of the flesh are manifest. You see that? The works of the flesh are manifest and they are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness and lavishness. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, quarreling, revelry, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, envying murderers drunkenness revealing and such like about these things i tell you again as i have also told you in the time in the times past that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness and faith meekness temperance see the word meekness again Temperance against such there is no law. And those who are Mashiachs have crucified the flesh with its affliction and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another and envying one another, brothers and sisters. So you see, meekness. Right? Meekness, brothers and sisters. Right? Meekness. Right? So let's move on, brothers and sisters. Right? And don't equate gentleness with cowardness, lack of conviction, or mere human niceness. It is a virtue that draws courage, strength, conviction, and good disposition from Elohim. And not from self-centered human resources. 
Let me repeat that again, brothers and sisters. And don't, so we're talking about meekness. And don't equate gentleness with cowardice, lack of conviction, or mere human niceness. It is a virtue that draws courage, strength, conviction, and good disposition from Elohim, not from self-centered human resources. That means not from selfish people. People who think about themselves. It's all about you, 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 and nobody else. So our familiar in our community, between both men and women, huh? Gender warfare foolishness that the wicked put in our community to further divide and conquer us. The same old colonial mastery, trickery, divide and conquer. And you're playing right into the end because you're ignorant and refuse to come back to these laws, commandments, and statutes in Yahusha's name so he can reconcile you back to his father who is a respecter of none. Right? And don't equate gentleness with cowardice, lack of conviction, or mere human niceness. It is a virtue that draws courage, strength, conviction, and good disposition from Elohim, not from self centered human resources. Right? The meekness of Yahusha. Gentleness characterizes our Adonai Yahusha, Amashiach. He always defended Elohim's glory and ultimately gave himself a sacrifice for Yashrael, Ethne Yashrael, right? See 1 Peter 2, 21-23. Let's look at that. 16 the KJV. Right, so turn the scriptures, turn your Bible to 1 Peter 2, colon 21-23, 16 KJV, right? This is Yahusha demonstration of meekness, the Elohim, right? For even hereunto were ye called, because Mashiach also suffered for us, which is Yashrael, that us is Yashrael, leaving us Yashrael as an example, that he should follow his steps. Right, let's go with this again. First Peter 2, colon 21-23. For even hereunto were ye called, because Mashiach also suffered for us, Yashrael, that's to us, leaving us, Yashrael, that's to us, an example that he should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. So who is him that judged righteously? His father, Yahuwah. Yahuwah Tisabahot, who is a respecter of none, brothers and sisters. You understand? He doesn't need you. You need him. Always keep him back in your head. So you could huff and puff and rebel all you want, brothers and sisters. But at the end of the day, he is in heaven, you on earth. He 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 cannot die. Yahuwah cannot die. Yahusha cannot die. That's why he rose on the third day. <laughs> He <laughs> saw me, brother, sister, Yahusha cannot die. That's why he rose on the third day. That's why his father rose on the third day. He cannot die. But you can and you will. And when you die, you go on in, in the earth where you were formed. Right? So you so you when you're on the earth, you look up. Huh? And when you die, you go down. <laughs> but who who is the one that's always on top? Who is the one that sit, sit in the heavens on his throne? Looking at the wicked and laughing at them. Seeing that their days are coming. Yahuwah. And his whole son Yahusha. So, again, whether you believe or not, brothers and sisters. Whether you believe or not, that's none of my concern. But I tell you this. Life of a death is real. Yahusha proved that when he rose on the third day. Yahusha proved that when he went down into hell. Go back, go back on all my 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 series about Adam and Eve and Yahusha. Where I stand before Pilate. Go back and go back on those 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 videos, brothers and sisters. You understand? Right? 
Right, brothers and sisters. So the meekness of Yahusha, right? Gentleness characteristics or gentleness characteristics or Adonai Yahusha. Um, he always defended Elohim's glory of his father and ultimately gave himself a sacrifice for Yashael, Etnif Yashael. Right? We just read First Peter 2, colon 21-23. We just read that. Yahusha didn't lash back when criticized, slandered, or threatened unjustly, but he did respond fittingly, criticized, slandered, or threatened unjustly, but right yahusha did not lash back when criticized slandered or threatened unjustly but he did respond fittingly and firmly when Elohim's honor was profaned you see that or his truth was perverted or neglected so the most i is telling you is he's meek <laughs> to a certain degree but when you come against his father and his word and yahusha and his word, then you see the lion come out, tear you up, <laughs> right? He draw the sword, two-edged sword, brothers and sisters, piercing the heart of the wicked. Hmm? This is why I tell you, 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 these parts of pork chops, and you follow, and you son the worshiper who follow these parts of pork chops, some of them don't understand the scriptures, they don't teach the scriptures, they don't tell the characteristics of the most, and many of you, many of you don't know who you worship. You don't know what he thinks, how he feels, and how he does things. This is why I say you got to be intimate with the Mosa Yahusha. And how you, how you be intimate with him is if you study his word, know his mindset, put on the mindset, the characteristics of the Mashiach. That's what it means. Put on the whole armor, the word, the Mashiach, he's the word. Know his characteristics, know his behavior. Know what he wants from us. You know what I mean? He's not like he, he did not give us an example. Had he not given us an example, you could have complained. But he gave us an example, he still complained. <laughs> so, <laughs> damn if you do, damn if you don't. Huh? When will you wake up, Yashael? Hmm? Meekness of Yahusha. Gentleness characteristics of Adonai Yahusha, Amashiach. He always defended God, Elohim's glory and ultimately gave himself in sacrifice for Yashael. Etni Yashael. Right? First Peter 2, colon 21-23. Yahusha didn't lash back, right? When criticized, slandered, or threatened unjustly, but he did respond fittingly and firmly when Elohim's honor was profane or his truth was per perverted or neglected he twice cleansed the temple by force right matthew 21 colon 12-17 let's look at that brothers and sisters okay brothers and sisters matthew chapter 21 colon 12-17 16 in kjv and yahushua went into the temple of Elohim and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the temple of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves and said unto and said unto them it is written my house shall be called the house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them and when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful thing that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Yahushua said unto him, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast perfected praises? And he left them and went out of the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. There's a similar scripture about when 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 is reference to out of the babes, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, thou hast perfected praises. Another Polish scripture said, Out of the babe, the truth are revealed to the babe and suckling. Right? So what what the scripture is in essence is saying to you, brothers and sisters, that right, the truth are revealed to the younger generation of this time because the elders has failed us in every way. Yeah, it's a handful of 
elders now you could go out and even them are corrupted because they did not do the necessary work and to gain wisdom and knowledge of scripture and ourselves to teach the next generation so it's up to this generation the young generation to break the cycle through the rock Archimedes, if only you would come to him in Yahusha's name and he will part with them knowledge and understanding that you may break the cycle of the oppressed of the oppression that the oppressor had put on us the only way we can break this mindset um cycle is through knowledge of the Mosai and his commandment keeping it that it may bring light to your soul and strength to your spirit and control of the flesh brothers and sisters you understand you understand brothers and sisters all right let's look at another scripture we're going to go to john 2 colon 14 dash 15 16 11 kjv brothers and sisters that's right john 2 colon 14 dash 15 and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting and when he had made a scourge of small cords he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the ox and poured out the changers money and overthrew the table so you see that the most I scourge them of small cords so he whooped them yeah the most is a lion <laughs> Lion of Judah, he is the Lion of Judah, and not no highly Selassie, he is the Lion of Judah, right? He is the Lion of Judah, right? And for you people who there would like to talk against the Mosai and his creation and and his vegetation herbs and stuff like that, right? You should study what Kalamos is in scriptures, right? That's one of the ingredients, you know what I mean? That was in the horn, as I was in the horn of Samuel the prophet in his oil, right? That's just an off the script point, you know? So this is what John is saying, you know, the, 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 the scripture is talking about the two, the dual characteristics of the most side he's meek but he's not weak you see it rhyme right meek and weak right meek and weak rhyming anyways right he shows you the character of christ on the other hand he's meek when he was led to lamb to the slaughter he did not fight the wicked he did not you know what i mean huff and puff although he could have done that because he's elohim king right but before his suffering you see what he did in john he showed that he's a lion, bold, right? John 2, colon 14, dash 15, right? And found in the temple. So the Mashiach found them in the temple, those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a cord of small cord, I mean, he put some cords together, wrapped some cord together, right? And he drove them all out of the temple. Huh? That means he whooped them and they ran. You see? And they ran out of the temple fast. Fast as you say, Bolt. Pew! They're gone. You understand? Because that's the most I whooping you physically. So imagine, think about it, brothers and sisters. Imagine. The most I come to found his heavenly throne and physically whoop you. <laughs> uh, tell him, brothers and sisters. Physically whoop you. Like a father to his child, physical child, whoop you. Man, I wish I would be there. I would have, it would have been a beautiful sight to see. Yahusha in work, like a lion, whooping you. Hmm? But this is what the scripture is showing you. The two sides of the Mashiach. But how would you know these things about our Savior, Yahshua El, Stephen Yahshua, if you do not saw the scriptures? And stop looking to other men to read the scripture to you. You say you come to the Mashiach himself. So he could teach you through the Ruach Akadesh. If you only would ask the Ruach Akadesh in Yahusha's name. That the Father might send it. To teach. To guide. And to comfort. 
right? So he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the ox and poured out the changers money and overthrew the tables, brothers and sisters, right? Right, brothers and sisters, and he repeatedly, he repeatedly and fearlessly denounced the hypocrisy of the Jewish religious leaders, the Jewish religious leaders, the Jewish ish, hmm? the Jewish religious leaders, right? And he repeatedly, right, he repeatedly and fearlessly denounced the hypocrisy of the Jewish religious leaders. Let's look at Matthew twenty-three. Colon 13 36 16 11 KJV. Okay, brothers and sisters, turn your Bible to Matthew 23, colon 13 36 16 11 KJV, right? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men for ye neither go in yourself neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites you see brother and sister the mashiach is no is no is no <laughs> he's no <laughs> he's, my, he's not a person to be messed with brothers and sisters he's a lion He's from the line of Judah. He's the conquering lion. The true conquering lion of Judah. Yehuda. Right? Let's take it again from verse 13. All these woes, right? Matthew 23, colon 13, dash 36, 16, 11, KJV. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourself, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for pre and for pretense making long prayer. You see that? Repetition of prayer. Tell you about your Christian love that long repetition of prayer. Claim you speaking in tongue, don't know what you're saying. Yes, I don't understand what tongues in the scriptures, what tongues mean in scriptures, hmm, and in the context of it. But you still listen to Pastor Pochop, right? Catching ghosts, right? Forsaking the rock, calculate the Holy Spirit. But you catch them ghosts too, right? Right? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, the hypocrites. For he devour widows. Houses and for a pretense make long prayer. And for a pretense make long prayer. The babbling. All that long prayer. When the Masha tell you, when you pray, say our Father. But you think you can impress the Most High with your righteousness. Our well, scripture said, the righteousness of man is as a filthy rag, brothers and sisters. You cannot impress the Most High with your righteousness. Because your righteousness is, is associated with filthiness and wickedness. That is why you have to come to the Mashiach, Yahusha, to put on his righteousness, that he may reconcile you back to his father, Yahuwah, Tizifahot, who is a respect of none. Hmm? Hmm? Brothers and sisters, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For he devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore he shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For he compass sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, he make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. <laughs> I tell you, don't mess with my Mashiach, brothers and sisters. Don't mess with him. Right? Woe unto you! He blind guides which say whoever, whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing but whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold? <laughs> Ye fools 
and blind for whether is greater the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold <laughs> don't mess with my mashiach brothers and sisters it's full of wisdom and whosoever shall swear by the altar it is nothing but whosoever swear by the gift that is upon it he is guilty he fools <laughs> and blind for whither is greater the gift or the altar that sanctified the gift these are hard questions you need to ask yourself ask your past the poor chaps whosoever therefore shall swear by the altar swear by it and by all things thereon and whosoever shall swear by the temple swear by it and by him that dwelleth therein and he that swear by heaven and swear by the throne of Eliakim and by him that sit upon it woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye pay tithes of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law judgment mercy and faith these ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone ye blind guys which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye may clean the house of the cup and out of the platter but within they were full of extortion and excess thou blind pharisees cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful out, outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanliness. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Wolves in sheep clothing, brothers and sisters. Some of these so-called reverend and clergymen walking around looking holy in their holy garments. You know, the Catholic Church, your Muslim and this and that, wrapping up. Uh, you all hypocrites. Don't know who you're serving. Don't know what God you serve. Don't know what God you're serving. you hypocrites. I didn't say that. The Mashiach said, you hypocrites. Right? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Because he build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say if we had been in the days of our fathers we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets fee ye up then the measures of your fathers ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell this is the Mashiach burning the fire, brothers and sisters. That Jamaica so we burn a fire. The Mosai is burning the fire, brothers and sisters. These are hard words. Either you accept or you don't. The Mashiach don't concern. The Mashiach is not concerned. You understand? All the Mashiach is concerned about is you keeping his commandments. That's why he gives you free will. You do what you please. But be no. He said to you, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, know this. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? So the Mashiach tell you there is a place called hell. And if there is a place called hell, and how would you get there? You're not going to get there while living. You may go to a hellish situation, but that's not hell. Hell is 20, 50, 100 times greater and more suffering, full, filled with suffering than what you're going through right now. You think you go through anything? You wait till you catch the hell. You know what I mean? You want to die and can't die. Hmm? Hmm. Verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel and unto the blood of Zacharias the son of Barakahas. Huh? 
Marakachas, uh, whom he slew between the temple of the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. This generation. This generation. The modern times, brothers and sisters. It shall come upon you and all of you who deny the sovereignty of Yahusha and his holy son Yahusha Hamashiach. Okay, brothers and sisters, turn the scriptures to Mark 12. Okay, brothers and sisters, turn the scriptures, the Bible verse to um, scriptures to Mark 12, right? We're going to take the Mark 12 calling 13 40. Mark 12 calling 13 40. Right, and they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of this of of the Herodians to catch him in his words. So they're trying to set trap for the Mashiach, right? And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man, for thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of Eli came in truth. It is lawful to give tribute to Caesar, right? Caesar or not shall we give or shall we not give but he knowing the hypocrisy said unto them why tempest ye me bring me a penny that I may see it <laughs> you know the pissed the mashak, the mashak is pissed off right now right <laughs> no, let, let's start over again brothers and sisters right Mark 12 right Taking it from 13 to 40, 1611 KJV, right? And they sent unto him certain of the Pharisees and of, this Her of the Herodians to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they say unto him, Master, we know that thou art true and carest for no man. For thou regardest not the person of men, but teachest the way of Elohim came in truth. Is it lawful to give of tribute to Caesar or not? Shall we give or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempest me? Right right here, the, the Mashak is pissed right now, right? He's pissed off with them right now. Because that's why he answered them in this way. Why tempest ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. Right? He's very agitated right now. He's very agitated right now because they're asking dumb questions. <laughs> it's all right. But that's why... The, the scripture started by saying after the Mashiach, yeah, after the, the hypocrites described the Pharisee asked him, Shall we or not give? Right? But being the Mashiach, he's El Elohim, he knows the thought before the thought. See, that's what they say. But he knowing their hypocrisy, so he knew it beforehand. Their foolishness, the hypocrisy said unto them, Why tempest ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. And they brought it, and he said unto them, Whose is this image and subscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. And Yahusha answered and said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to Elohim the things that are Elohim's. And they marveled at him. Huh? Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection, and they asked him, saying, Master, Moshe wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife and, the, and, and died and left no seed. And the second took and died, neither left he any, and the third likewise. And the seven had her and left no seed. And last of all, the woman died also in the resurrection therefore when they shall rise whose wife shall be of them for the seven had her to wife yahusha answered and said unto them do he not therefore err because he know not the scriptures neither the power of Elohim? for when they shall rise from the dead they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels which are in heaven as and as as touching the dead that they rise have you not read in the book of moshe how in the bush elohim spake unto him saying i am the elohim of abraham and the elohim of isaac and the elohim of yaakov 
He is not the Elohim of the dead, but the Elohim of the living. He therefore do greatly err. Hmm? And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Yahusha answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear O Yashael, Yahuwah our Elohim is one Adonai. Hmm? He's one Elohim. That's the first commandment. Know that Yahuwah is Elohim and he's one. Hmm? Let me go over this again so it could, take a, so it could be ingrained and printed on your, on your feeble minds. And Yahusha answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Yashrael. Yahusha is speaking to you, stiff naked so called black people. He's talking to you. Hmm? And Yahusha answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Yashrael. See, hear, you got to listen. Many of you don't listen, you just quick to respond without listening. You listen, you don't, you gotta listen. You know, the American, the, the, you know, the so called black people in America, you have a, have a saying, you know, you're hearing but you're not listening. You're hearing, you're hearing, you see the mouth moving but you're not listening, you gotta listen. And in order to listen, when you listen, guess what happened when you listen? Truly listen, you comprehend. And when you truly comprehend, your mindset changes. Because you truly listen and you want to change. You gotta listen. Hmm? Yahushua answered him, the first of all the commandments is Hear, O Israel, Yashrael. Huh? Yahuwah our Elohim is one Adonai. And thou shalt love Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment so you see in the 20 uh, verse 29 and 30 is lined up perfectly the first commandment is the same same commandment right once you he wants you hear the mashiach that's what the master said the sheep hear my voice huh the sheep hear my voice huh and they follow huh that's the first commandment but the first commandment is the same commandment in 30. Because once you hear the voice of the man she got knowledge that, that Yahuwah is our Elohim, guess what happened in verse 30? And thou shalt love Yahuwah that Elohim with all thine heart. Because once you hear the word of the Mashiach, once you believe on the Mashiach and come to the glory, guess what happened? Your heart. You will you will love. Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and with all thy strength. And this is the first commandment. Because why? Why why can you do all these things, brothers and sisters? Because you did it in because you listen in verse 29 when the matcha said the commandments, the first commandment is to hear. And because you hear, guess what happened? By your hearing, you understand that thou shalt love. Yahuwah thy Elohim with all thy heart because you hear the word. So because you hear the word, you understand you shall love thy Elohim with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And all this takes place. Why? Because of verse 29. Because you you're first, you heard it. That's the first thing you hear, you hear, the, you hear the commandment, you hear the word. The first of all the commandments because you hear, right? And because you heard the word, you heard the scriptures and you believe in the Mashiach, you'll be able to do all these in, in verse 30 and 31, right? So we are 32 now. And the scribe said unto him, well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one and the scribes and said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one Elohim, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all thy heart, with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, 
and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all who burnt offering and sacrifice you see that and also connect again to the old testament when the scripture said in psalm you know have i delight in the burnt offering of bullock and he goes worship me with a contrary spirit a broken and contrary spirit so the most i don't delight in the bullocks and offering and stuff like that right but that was a precursor for you to understand the mashiach would be the final and permanent living sacrifice offered once for the sin of Yashael. And he's the only mediator between man and Yahuwah. And that's, Yah uh, that's Yahusha and Mashiach. There's no Mary. There's none of that. That's all demonic and pagan. Mary represents Hachatan. Figuratively. In the formation of worshipping her. The goddess of heaven. Hmm? Mm, brothers and sisters mm? huh? and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offering and sacrifice and when Yahusha saw that he answered discreetly he said unto him Thou art not far from the king of Elohim, and no man after that desk ask him any question. Huh? And Yahusha answered and said, While he taught in the temple, how say the scribes that Mashiach is the son of David? For David himself by, said by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, Yahuwah said to my Yahuwah, sit thou at the hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Hmm? Hmm? For thou it said, for thou himself said by the Ruach HaKadosh, the Adonai said to my Adonai, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Thou will therefore himself call him Adonai, and whence is he then his son? And the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them in his doctrine, be aware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing and love salutation in the marketplace. This is happening right now in your synagogues and your temples and your mosques and your churches, brothers and sisters. Hmm? And the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses and of a pretense making long prayers these shall receive greater damnation hmm? Hmm, brothers and sisters hmm? right brothers and sisters right brothers and sisters i say and here's some more verses so you you can go and read for yourself also john 8 colon 12 that's 59 He's still talking about the hypocrisy of the Jewish. Hmm? So I've, I've read to you Matthew 23, colon 13, that's 36, and Mark 12, colon 12, that's, I mean, Mark 12, colon, Mark 12, colon 13, that's 40, right? So here's two more verses you can go and read on your own, right? John 8, colon 12, that's 59. Please write these down. John 8, colon 12, that's 59. John 9, colon 39 41, brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? On your own time, you can go and read those things for yourself. Because the whole purpose of my lessons and this channel is to impart wisdom and knowledge that is given to me through the Ruach HaKadosh that you may go and do your own research once you listen to these videos, brothers and sisters. Go and do your own research. Share, like, and subscribe to this channel, brothers and sisters, also, right? Right, brothers and sisters? It's free. You know, this is not a money thing. It's a knowledge thing because with knowledge, your mind is renewed, especially with right knowledge of wisdom, knowledge and understanding that it may come out of the gutter that you put yourself in through disobedience. Right? When his time of suffering came, however, Yahushua submitted to the will of his father endured the abuse and murderous intentions of the hypocritical leaders. He demonstrates meekness to the very end while being reviled. 
he did not revile in return while suffering he uttered no threats but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously right first peter 2 colon 23 although yahushua said blessed happy right blessed happy huh? are the meat we don't celebrate meekness in our culture instead we celebrate assertiveness we celebrate getting things from other people sometimes even taking advantage of other people when is the last time you saw a movie that celebrates the virtue of meekness hmm? when is the last time the big build-up for the movie was the moment when the good guy meekly restrained himself even though he was wrong we don't want to go to movie like that hmm? we want to see a a payback movie in which the first half consists of bad things happening to the hero and the last half consists of bad things that comes to the people who did those things to the hero that is what entertainers that is what world culture celebrates hmm? how different how different this is from the what the bible teaches the bible celebrate meekness the biblical view says last is first just who the descendant of evil slaves scattered worldwide was first and now we are last because of the disobedience of our forefathers and our own continued disobedience till this very day giving is receiving dying is living losing is finding the least is the greatest meekness is strength the idea is that we are living by Elohim's truth not by what our culture says should make us happy hmm? Hmm? the meek will hurt the hurt right and when Yahusha says that the meek will hurt the hurt he is speaking on incredibly counter culture truth to those people sitting on this hill in the middle of the village overlooking the sea of Galilee so that hillside is an tabgha near Capernaum this were Yahusha taught the the beatitudes because this was a world that didn't understand weakness or meekness this was a world that understood power this was a world overruled by caesar this is a world where armies made people in rebellion subject to their sheer force this is a world that turned on the tables of power those were the people that inherit the earth huh i'm um, Right, and by the way, brothers and sisters, Yahusha's message was preached within a context. He's not preaching to the rich and powerful. He's not pre preaching to the people that had the ability to, in our modern way, make a phone call to make something happen. I mean, he's preaching to Yashael. And he's saying, if you're a meek person, uh, if you have strength under control, if you're that type of personality, that not only will you be happy but you'll have a type of life and a type of power that transcends even the power of caesar because every time yahusha preaches a sermon he's not just preaching to our life in this world he's preaching to something greater and i'm convinced that those who inherit the earth sometimes are those whose stories are never known on the earth except one day when we're standing in heaven we we find out that little person sitting on the hill was the unlikely character Elakim uses to change history. You never know the end of the story until you get to it. On that note, brothers and sisters, I say, blessed love and shalom.